What's your question, Tommy? It's your boy back again, the one and only Keith Allen, your motivation guy, to bring you guys the latest and greatest tips to help you become a better competitive Fortnite player. Today, we're going to be going over an important topic, which is how to optimize your loadout. Okay, so the current season has introduced plenty of new equipment and weaponry for you guys to use as you fight your way to the top of the competition. However, having a set of favorite weapons is very different from having a competitive loadout. Like, you need to be able to compare different items and figure out which one is going to benefit you more during the match. Even then, it's not even as simple as just weapon A is better than weapon B. So if you're accustomed to playing Fortnite casually, it can be tempting to really pick up one of, you know, every weapon or just stock up on a variety of different healing items just in case of an emergency. However, I'm going to say this. There are so many different types of items that can be helpful and only a limited amount of space to really put them all in. And so you as a player is going to have to decide which equipment you're going to be using for your playstyle and strategy. All right, so if you have the time, try organizing your loadout in a way that will be most convenient for you. Something that can really catch any player off guard, especially rookies, man, not knowing which item is where. This can cause you to accidentally pull out a healing item. When trying to pull out a pump, keyboards are just much easier to organize in these situations. But having your loadout follow a similar pattern each game is going to get you more accustomed to it, whether you play on keyboard or controller. You know, consider the following structure. Okay, your first two slots can be weapons. The center could be a utility item and the last two slots can be saved for healing items and consumables. As a player, you can structure the slots whichever way that you like, depending on your game mode. However, having your slots dedicated to certain types of items can help you remember where everything is. So even if you don't follow this example, it's just good to have structure. So let's begin by going over loadouts from a solo perspective. Here we go. Are you guys struggling to break free from the open or contenders division in Fortnite? Well, you know, everybody has the potential to improve and the best way to push that potential to the max is with a Fortnite coach. You know, our Fortnite coaches are world class and are available 24 seven to help you guys improve. Head on over to proguys.com with the link in the description to improve at Fortnite like right now. If you're new to shooters, then weapons can feel the same unless you just really know how to use them. You know, it's a compare and contrast situation, especially in Fortnite, since the building mechanic offers another layer for the game's meta. You know, in a specific loadout, often players will carry an assault rifle and a shotgun. However, if they carry a third weapon, it will usually alter between, you know, SMGs and snipers. SMGs have a high rate of fire and can be great for close to medium range combat. However, the fire rate is also good for eating away at builds when you're trying to fight an enemy who was just boxed up or behind a wall. Snipers, on the other hand, can give you dominance in long range situations. In the current Fortnite meta, the only sniper is the automatic sniper. So you're going to have a higher rate of fire at the expense of damage per shot. And so while it might not be as effective as tearing down walls, it's just an excellent weapon for providing cover. With the introduction of ghost floppers, fishing is even more popular than it was before. So if you plan on incorporating a few fish into your loot, you need to decide which is going to work better for you, the harpoon or the fishing pole. If you can find a harpoon right off the bat, this can be an excellent way of just collecting fish quickly without having to wait for them just to bite. Just use them on any fishing spot and you're going to get some something back in an instant. Not only is the harpoon good for just fishing, but it makes a great utility weapon. Sometimes you want to get a refresh kill without exposing yourself, and the only way to do that is to get an enemy closer to you or just bring those items to you directly. So if you want to take advantage of fishing in Fortnite, then try going for those fishing poles if you can't find a harpoon gun. However, once the harpoon gun becomes available, do not hesitate in swapping that out. Although the fishing pole can be used indefinitely, the speed and functionality of the thing, man, I'm telling you right now, the harpoon gun is going to be more useful to you in the long run. When planning your loadout, it's definitely recommended that you always have a shockwave launcher on you when playing solo. This is going to allow you to rotate much easier and gain the advantage in a fight. It's also an excellent way of just bursting through your opponent's build and getting the high ground. Other uses include being able to knock your opponents back into the storm or even away from their teammates. So the next set of items to look at are the consumables. If you've just started playing Fortnite or you've never gone out of your way to competitively uh, play, then you know some of these items might fly under the radar. Luckily, we're here to catch you guys up. Here we go. The most common forms of consumables are bandages, small shields, large shields, and med kits. However, once you dig deeper, you get so much more to experiment with in your loadout from forage items to fish. The bandages are good for healing small injuries. However, they will never take your health above 75 and only heal 15 health at a time. 
Sometimes it's just better to have meat or floppers if you can just manage them. Floppers are infinitely better than bandages since they can heal you 40 health at a time at a faster rate. Not to mention, they will also heal you past the 75 marker. If you think 75 health isn't too bad on full shields, think again. That fraction of health can be the deciding factor when you and your opponent are firing at each other. This is especially true if your opponent is engaging you with the pump, and so they can easily score 200 pumps on you with one shot. Just don't make any of that easier for them. Small shields and large shields are the standard treatment for a blue bar running low. You know, small shields will always cap at 50. If you want to go any further, you're going to need a large shield potion. However, sometimes you might want to change it up and just include some chug splash in the loadout instead of that standard small shield. You get five points less of shield recovery, but it's just a much faster item to use and can go past the 50 cap. Not to mention, it can also be used to heal health and give down teammates more time before they bleed out and generally give more than one player a heal. So now guys, let's talk about trios. Take everything that you learned about playing solo and divide it into three. With three separate loadouts, it means a whole new way to organize. Here, and I mean like right here, the equipment that you carry will be mostly determined by what kind of role that you plan on playing. An important thing to keep in mind as well is that you shouldn't be tempted to have everyone just carrying the same exact weapons. A team composed solely of automatic snipers is vulnerable to close range fighters. You know, same goes vice versa. Like you will easily be picked off if your entire team is just running pumps. So you guys got to change up your loadouts, diversify the loadouts so they can complement each other and just cover what the other members of your team can. Okay, so if you're the fragger of the team, you're always going to want to carry a variety of weapons for any fight. This means having a shotgun, assault rifle, as well as two healing items. If you plan on ending those fights quickly, the go-to weapon to have in your loadout is the pump shotgun since it can end the fight in one shot, right? While the charge shotguns are also an excellent choice, you as the fragger are the player with the best aim and should make use of the pump whenever possible. The burst rifle is also an excellent choice for a fragger since it deals burst damage, you know, the more accurate the player is. This means that you can beam your opponents from afar and get the most out of the weapon. However, don't be hesitant to swap it out during the match if you happen to find a scar of higher rarity. Okay, so as a fragger, you have a choice in the third weapon and it all really depends on the playstyle. Like, you can either go for an SMG or the sniper depending on whether you want to have some rapid fire in your life or you know if you just want to be able to get those long range kills sometimes the weapon that you have for this final slot will change as the game progresses for example in the early game you might be more focused on getting those sniper kills however once you've reached the late game and it becomes a close quarters tarp fest you might want to swap the sniper out for an smg so a support should always carry items that was going to help their teammates and prevent them from soloing the automatic sniper is the perfect tool to make sure that your teammates have cover from afar. Like you may also consider having a charge shotgun instead of the pump to diversify your team's use of weapons. So if you want to support your team, you can also make sure to carry plenty of healing items and shields. And this is going to free up their inventory for other items such as floppers or peppers. The chili chug item is also a good item to have in your inventory as support. Since the role of the support always requires you to be the one in the middle of your IGL, you know, tarper and your fragger, like that close proximity is excellent for providing speed and healing buffs to all your teammates. All right, so like we mentioned earlier, the support will also benefit from keeping a harpoon gun around. Like you never know when you're going to need to refresh kill or, you know, some more floppers. The IGL of your trio will need to focus on rotating and tarping. Because of this, you want to make sure that they have items that can help with rotating. The shockwave cannon can help your team get to where they need to quickly. And, you know, you as the IGL are going to know exactly where to use it to get where you want to go. You know, we haven't really gone over mats yet since you always want to maxed out when you're playing solo. But I will say this, in a trio situation, you always want your IGLs to have their mats completely maxed out. You know, odds are that they're going to most likely end up as your main tarper for the match. So having them be completely maxed out is going to ensure that your IGO can keep tarping for as long as needed. Most importantly, guys, despite these differences, don't forget to keep your IGO armed with weapons of their choice and healing items. All right, guys, that's it for today. Bunch of Crunch Army. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hey, man, if you guys liked it, do not forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. And uh, man, just stay up to date on all the latest and greatest tips that we have to offer. So until next time, man, keep those loadouts balanced and make sure that you and your teammates are in agreement on who's going to carry what. Do that, man. And I'm telling you, you're going to be prepared for everything. So proud of you guys. Once again, this is your motivation guy, the one and only Keith Allen. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.